Hello, my name is Ben Cooper and I'm the controller of Radio One and One Extra. So my job is to run two radio stations. So um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I suppose it's about choosing which DJs I think are going to relate to young audiences who know their music and can be entertaining and choosing which programmes they present. So I got into radio uh, by making cups of tea and uh, it's probably the best bit of skills that you need is being able to make a good cup of tea for someone. Um, I failed my A-levels disastrously. Uh, I did go on to college and do an HND and then when I had the option to make that into a degree, do another, another year, I uh, really disappointed my family and said, you know what, I've got myself doing some work experience in a local radio station, that's what I love, that's what I want to do, and uh, so I did it. I started on something like 30 quid a week um, and just did anything and everything I could to learn more about how that radio station ran and then sort of worked my way up. I think in radio, just getting yourself in the building is vital. Getting yourself into a studio or around a studio is vital for your career because um, you could sit in a lecture hall if you wanted to, you could read a book about it, but nothing beats the experience of that red light going on. And that if you're a presenter or a producer, the butterflies in your stomach uh, and the excitement uh, that that brings. So getting a, an internship or work experience, I think is really, really important to your CV. Um, people want to know that uh, you have experience of being around a live broadcast environment. Um, they need to have confidence in you. Uh, so whether that be hospital radio, community radio, whether it be student radio, which is a great way of, of learning, uh, or maybe a local radio station, try and get your foot in the door. So how do you get into the building? To, in a, you know, <laughs> you could try running at the door very hard, uh, but the, the best way that uh, I've, I've heard of is when you uh, email somebody um, is not to ask for a job. Do not ask for a job because you'll scare someone. You're, the, you will get that response of going, oh, we're too busy or there aren't any jobs at the moment and that's it, you're cut dead. What you want to do is say, I'd like to have a cup of tea. I'd like to get your advice. I'm thinking about getting into the industry. I'm thinking about, you know, getting involved, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in sort of radio, and I would like your, your advice. People love that. They'd be, oh, yes, I could tell you about my job, you know. So um, listen to the station that you're approaching. What is it that you like? What programs do you automatically get, feel drawn to? Um, what sort of music, what genres of, of music do you like? and listen to those programs so that you can come with some expertise, you can come with some questions. Oh, that feature about such and such, or that interview was really funny. You suddenly get a connection, because you don't want to sort of walk up to someone and say, I want a job. It's almost like walking into a bar and saying, I'd like to get married to you. It's not gonna happen. You know, you're gonna just scare people silly, so you just wanna have that softly, softly approach of saying, um, let's meet up for a tea, let me get some advice from you. So top five tips of how to get into the radio industry. First of all, there's a quote by, uh, I think it's Thomas Jefferson, an old president of the US of A. And he said, the harder I work, the luckier I become. And what I think he means by that, or what certainly I, I take from that is, when I started out in local radio, it's the times when everyone's gone home that you suddenly go, right, I'll go down to the studio, I'll start learning how that equipment works. Because one day someone's gonna be ill Someone's going to be late from a meeting and they're going to look around and say, who knows how that works? And you put your hand up and say, I know how it works. And then that's it. You're there. You're done. You're in. And they go, great. Well, you could do that and you could do this for me. So the harder you work, the more hours you put in around a studio and around the equipment, uh, the luckier you will become. Second thing is know your craft. If you want to be in radio, then do radio. Don't just talk to your mates about how you're going to be the next breakfast show presenter on, the, on your favourite radio station. Go and actually do it. Uh, get into uh, either a college radio or a community radio station and put those hours in. Third one is get advice. Find out all you possibly can. No one gives you a guidebook. 
So go and try and find out the people who've gone before you and get their advice. And sometimes even if they like you, get their help. Fourth thing is if you do get a job, uh, then you put your game face on when you come to work. There's no point in a radio station of being down and moody or upset because you are in the entertainment business and people don't tune into the radio to hear people moaning. Uh, you've got to uh, come to work with a positive attitude, you've got to be liked, you've got to have that sort of demeanour about you. Um, and I think, you know, it's a fun place to work and that's a very attractive thing, but you've got to make sure when you leave home, you leave all of that behind and you come into the studio because the best thing that makes great radio is the atmosphere in the studio. And you've got to add to that. You can't be what some people call an atmosphere hoover. Do your job brilliantly, but then also think about the next move. Always be thinking about what is it that I would like to do next. Because if you suddenly turn around and stop and go, oh, I really want to move on, and you've done no prep, and no sort of seeding the, sort of the ground for that next move, then you're gonna stutter, you're gonna, you're gonna stall. What you need to be doing is constantly thinking, what's the next move, what's the next thing that I'd like to do? Not to the annoyance of the people around you, keep it to yourself, but have that thought, have that game plan written down maybe at home, and just think, right, so who do I need to go and talk to next? So if you want to be a radio presenter, Yes, you've got to get the experience, but there's more than the experience. There's more than just sounding great. You can send in a pilot or a demo tape to someone, but can you prove that you've got the energy around it? That buzz, if you like, that magic. For want of a better phrase, the X factor, okay? Because if you're passionate about music, have you put on a club night? Have you promoted a band? Have you gone down and said to a pub, right, I'm going to bring in three bands and we'll do this deal and I can bring you so many of my friends in, etc. If you can start showing that you've got that energy and that you can get off the sofa and do something about the thing that you're passionate about, then brilliant. If you're into, you know, you think you're an entertaining presenter, well, have you put on a comedy night or have you done your own blogs or have you done your own uh, sort of podcasts or have you, um, you know, filmed yourself and put up Know, and posted video on YouTube and can I see that you've had so many hits. If you can demonstrate that there's a buzz and an energy and there's a demand there from your friends and then also more importantly and powerfully strangers then that is impactful and you put that information together with you sounding good then we'll start talking. So the secret of my success um, I would say is down to probably three things. All well, comes in threes doesn't it? But First thing is uh, lucky, being in the right place at the right time and meeting those people and making those opportunities really work. I think the second one is um, being skillful. You have to have a skill base that you can, you know, the foundation blocks of your career. Um, and then the last one is the never stop being inquisitive, never stop learning and, you know, having that mindset that goes, well, how come they're doing it like that? Or well, why aren't they doing it the same as me? Uh, I think th those three elements together and combined have been allowed me to sort of get to the next stage. And it's not necessarily been a, um, a logical sort of progression up, up, up. It's sometimes that you have to make a sideways move because you think, hold on a second, there's a whole new, new skills over there that I could use. And seeing opportunities where they arise and grabbing them so those are the three things I reckon that have served me well.